Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create patterns inside of Illustrator. So I've got this piece of artwork in here which is essentially, it's a, I've recreated Lichtenstein's Wonder Woman image. So classic pop art style and um, to try and invoke uh, the closer to that pop art style, I want to put a half tone dot appearance in here. Um, we're going to do that with patterns and I'm going to show you some neat tricks of how you can combine patterns with colours as well using the appearance panel. Um, but you'll notice that I've already got some colours in my swatches panel down here and I have some shapes that I'm going to use as the basis for my pattern. So pretty much you'll start off with some type of vector artwork to make the pattern. So if I pick up my zoom tool and then zoom in down here, I have then got um, some lighter and darker skin tones and then some lighter and darker lipstick colours. So I'm going to select the circle here, then I'm going to go up to the window menu and then down to the rather fabulously named pattern options. Which to be honest is, um, well, fundamentally flawed from the outset because the whole point of this is to make a pattern and there's no obvious way of how you do that. You have to go to the panel flyout menu and choose make pattern. Now when you do, you'll go into a type of isolation mode. This is what it's telling us on screen in here. So essentially when I click OK to this, it's going to lock everything out, hide everything to clear your view of your artwork and focus on just the pattern artwork. Then in here, first thing is I'll swipe over that and call that um, skin dots. And then um, from here, well, I'm going to leave this tile type set to grid. You can change that to be sort of brick by row and it staggers them. Um, and you've got hex by column and things like that. And then essentially you've got different ways in which if you want to, you could offset them in there by sort of a half, two thirds, for example, in there. So in the case of this one, all I want to do is just create a grid pattern in there. The original artwork appears inside the middle in what's called a tile. That thing's blue. And in fact, if I zoom in a bit closer so we can see this in here side by side by the panel, um, your original artwork is inside that blue tile and then the virtual versions are then created on the outside, kind of like a wallpaper for a pattern, of course. So the width and the height refers to the tile. So I'm going to make sure then that I want some space between these. The, the link is there, so I have to do is swipe over one of those and then use the cursor key to tap up and then space them apart. I don't want them spaced out too far. So I think that's probably enough to be perfectly honest. You can edit this afterwards as well. That is possible. So um, with that done, you can preview down at the bottom number of copies. Uh, one by one would just show the original artwork. You can go up to nine by nine. So if you want to see how that pattern works for a larger area, you can do that. But these are essentially just viewing options. And if I'm zooming out here, there you see we have the tile. I'm happy with that. So when I'm done, up at the top, this is the way that you exit pattern editing or creation mode. Um, if I choose cancel, which I'm definitely not, it would undo everything that we've just accomplished here. If I was to click on save a copy, it will create a save version of this first bit of artwork in here. Then it will create another pattern as well and we'd name it something different. So 99.9% .9 of the time, you will literally just go straight to done. And you notice here, we now have a pattern called skin dots. It shows that one version of that circle in there, which it would then repeat of our artwork. So then to apply it, if I zoom out and then select uh, this here, like so, and then I'll need the appearance panel that already has the, the lighter skin tone. Now, I I want maximum flexibility for this and you'll find this with patterns. I'm going to put a circle pattern over the top. You notice that I only included the circle. I didn't include the lighter skin flat color in the background. So this is why. So notice at the moment, this object uh, has a fill in here, which is um, pop skin light. And if I click away from that, go down to the bottom, I can add another new fill color. It pretty much duplicates the original, but if I click on this, I can then choose the skin dot and then click away. So there you go. That is how you can combine them. Now, I'm not saying I would in this case, but you could click in here and you could change the color at any time to mix and match that. So this is kind of looking a bit X-Men now. So, um, it gives you that, that little bit of extra flexibility. If you can keep the actual pattern, the thing that you tile separate from a background color, 
it definitely will give you flexibility. Now, in this case, um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on pop skin light and then click away from there. Now, the next thing I'll need to do is uh, rotate this pattern. So if I click on the fill item in there for just the pattern, obviously my object's still selected and then go up to object transform and then choose rotate. So in here, um, it will pick up whatever angle was chosen last. Um, you'll notice in here, usually it will want to rotate the object. But if I turn off transform object, it will only rotate the pattern in there by leaving that transform patterns checkbox turned on. And then it is a case then of just dragging this around. I mean, it would normally be set to zero. And then um, if I swipe over that value in there, I can tap and I can just change the angle in there like so. And I actually just want to rotate it around oddly enough to me clockwise, which puts a minus in there. So um, yeah, going to minus 10 in there just to rotate that round ever so slightly. So it's not horizontal and perfectly vertical. And then with that done, I'll click OK. So that's my artwork done inside of there. Um, I will go up to the top to path. And then with that active, I can then go to graphic styles and then I can add a new graphic style to capture that in there. So there it is. That will then allow me to select all the other skin tone elements and then just apply that in there. And it's captured everything that I need. So um, yeah, really effective. Good combination again of typical Adobe stuff where there's several panels but they do work in unison. So um, the other one then is the lips. Again, same technique uh, with that selected. I need to go and then create a pattern over here from the red dot. So back up to window, down to pattern options. Make pattern, uh, click OK. You can always turn off the don't show again checkbox, which is very handy. Um, and then I'm going to call this um, lipstick. And then from here again, grid, I'm going to make sure they are linked together and then just tap up just to just move those out just a little bit in there, a little bit of spacing, six millimeters in my case, and then click on done. And again, I get another uh, pattern inside of there. If I scoot across over here, select that one, select the other one as well. I could actually do this in one go because it's the lips in here. Um, they're going to be kept in the same part of the document. So if I go up to object, compound path and choose make. Illustrator will treat them as one object. And then back to appearance. I've got my uh, lighter lipstick color. I can go down, add a new fill, click on that one, change it to that one, which is a little bit too big. I want this a lot smaller. So again, I've got the uh, pattern active inside of there, back up to object, then transform and then choose. First of all, rotate, which will apply that rotation again. It matches the same settings, so I can just click OK to that one. Back to object, then transform, and this time choose scale. Again, with preview turned on, transform objects turned off. So it's only going to affect the patterns. I'm going to use the uniform scale the top up there, and then just use the shift and the down cursor key in there just to jump that up and down in increments of 10%. I'm going to get that nice and small inside of there, maybe a bit too big. And then, yeah, at that value in there, I'm fairly happy with that. I'll click OK and then there we go. So that is how you create patterns inside of Illustrator. In this case, I've used them as a kind of a half tone dot effect for this pop art. And you've seen how we can use graphic styles to apply that to any objects. And the beauty of the appearance panel is you can keep those two assets separate and you can change the background color and you could change the pattern to something else if you wish to. Um, and this is a kind of a, a two part video. So um, in next week's video, I'm going to look at how we can finish this off because we need to thicken and thin out some of the lines and it needs to be finished off in terms of the kind of pop art effect in here. So join me next week, same time, uh, roughly lunchtime on a Friday. And um, yeah, that's it, folks. I genuinely didn't think that I was going to get a video out this week because with everything that's going on with COVID-19, um, I've pretty much been on lockdown and, um, I, and I'm still here. I made it. So take care, folks, stay well, and I will see you in the future.